Welcome back to the Madison Group's YouTube channel. In this video, we are going back to the basics, our series that provides vital information regarding the techniques and knowledge that the Madison Group utilizes to solve the many problems that occur within the plastics industry. In this video, we will be discussing the basics of the test method thermogravimetric analysis, or TGA. This video is intended to provide you with the pertinent knowledge that is required to understand the results and applications for a very important test method in polymer analysis. At the conclusion of this video, you should be equipped with the basic concepts of TGA and how to understand what those results are telling you. We are the Madison Group and we are your polymer experts. In this video, we will be covering what a TGA is and the very basics of how the equipment functions. We will cover what results to expect from the analysis so that you will have an idea of what graphs and data are typically provided with this test. We will also show how the results should be analyzed and the key points you should be looking at from the data. Finally, we will demonstrate a few key applications of TGA, as well as some of the limitations of this particular test and equipment. You may be wondering, what is thermogravimetric analysis? TGA is a thermoanalytical technique that measures the weight changes of a sample at a given time and temperature. The equipment provides quantitative and qualitative information about physical changes, whether weight loss or gain, in the sample in response to the current temperature, heating rate, and the atmosphere, whether it's inert or oxygen rich. TGA can quantify the major constituents of a material, study decomposition and thermal stability, and be used as a secondary means of material identification. This is a thermogravimetric analyzer. At its most basic, a TGA subjects a relatively small sample of material to a temperature and atmosphere and measures the weight changes of the sample. While there are many different experiments that can be ran, the most common TGA experiment involves heating the sample to a high temperature so that the organic matter of the sample decomposes. For analysis, the sample is placed onto a hanging pan that is measured by a balance and then situated in a sealed furnace with a thermocouple that measures temperature. A common TGA experiment involves heating the sample at a specific rate, for example, 20 degrees C per minute up to a given temperature. During this experiment, called a heating ramp, the weight of the sample in the pan and the temperature inside the furnace are recorded multiple times per second. This allows the equipment to record both changes in the weight of the sample and the rate of those weight changes as a function of time or temperature. Additionally, the atmosphere inside the furnace is controlled so that it is inert or oxygen rich. Many TGA experiments involve switching from an inert atmosphere, such as nitrogen gas, to an oxygen-rich atmosphere, such as dried, compressed air. The reasons for having an inert or oxygen-rich atmosphere will be discussed in the Applications section. This is a typical graph that is outputted from a TGA test of a polymeric material. This graph is plotted with temperature on the horizontal axis although some analysts prefer to plot TGA results with respect to time. The percentage of the original weight remaining of the sample, called the weight percent curve, is plotted on the vertical axis. Additionally, the derivative curve of the weight percent with respect to temperature is also plotted, with its scale shown on the right vertical axis. On the graph, we see that this experiment involved heating the sample to 650 degrees C in an inert nitrogen atmosphere, then cooling the sample to 500 degrees C in nitrogen, and finally switching to an oxygen-rich air atmosphere and heating the sample to 800 degrees C. The rate of heating in both the nitrogen and air atmospheres was performed at 20 degrees C per minute, which is a typical heating rate for TGA. A single point on the weight percent curve will tell you how much of the percentage of the sample weight remains on the pan at that given temperature. For instance, if we select the point at 375 degrees C, this specific sample has lost approximately 32% of its weight by the time the furnace has reached 375 degrees C. 
as you can see, 67.96% of the sample remains on the pan. The weight percent curve is primarily used to determine the amount of weight changes for each decomposition step in the plastic, as well as the amount of inorganic residue left after the completion of the testing. The usefulness of the derivative curve can be observed by removing it from the graph, while the approximate temperature range for an individual decomposition step can be eyeballed on the weight percent graph, it is much more difficult to accurately determine the temperature at the center of the decomposition step, or if it is centered around multiple temperatures. If we bring the derivative curve back into the graph, we can clearly see the temperatures at which each decomposition step starts and ends. Furthermore, you can accurately assess the changing rate of decomposition to determine at what temperature the maximum rate of decomposition is occurring, or whether there are multiple maximums for a single decomposition step. For these reasons, both the weight percent curve and the derivative of the weight percent curve are used to accurately and precisely assess the TGA data. After receiving TGA results, you may be asking yourself, how is the data interpreted? The analyst will use the software to calculate important quantitative information regarding the multiple decomposition steps in the plastic material. However, many of these calculations could be made by hand since they occur between one or two points. Initially, it is in your best interest to look at a few key aspects of the graph prior to performing calculations. The vast majority of weight changes in TGA experiments are losses in weight, and an unexpected weight gain could be an indication that the experiment should be reran. Additionally, the TGA results are highly dependent on the heating rate, the atmosphere in the furnace, and the maximum temperature achieved during testing. Variation in these three things could change the data so that experiments with different parameters likely cannot be directly compared. When performing calculations on the graph, a good place to start with interpretation is the derivative of the weight percent curve. The derivative curve will clearly show you how many decomposition steps there are in your sample and whether any steps are overlapping with other decomposition steps. If a peak within the derivative curve comes back to the baseline, then it is likely that that specific decomposition step is separated from other ones in the material. Information that can be gathered from the derivative curve are the start and end of each decomposition step, as well as the temperature at which the maximum decomposition rate has occurred. If that decomposition step is the polymer within the plastic material, that temperature at the peak is generally referred to as the decomposition temperature for that polymer. Once the individual decomposition steps are defined in the derivative curve, the amount of weight loss or rarely weight gain can be assessed for each decomposition step on the weight percent curve. One point will be selected prior to the weight loss and one point will be selected after the weight loss. The difference in weight percent between the starting and ending points is the weight change for that particular decomposition step. Furthermore, the percentage of material that is left on the pan after completion of the experiment is referred to as the residue for that sample. The residue is calculated by selecting a single point after all decomposition steps have completed. The residue can include fillers such as talc or calcium carbonate, reinforcements such as glass fiber, char that is formed during decomposition of the polymer, as well as any trace inorganic elements in the plastic material. Finally, the amount of water vapor and other volatiles can be calculated by selecting the range of temperatures prior to any decomposition in the plastic material. Once the desired data is collected from the TGA graph, only half the work is completed. The individual decomposition steps still need to be associated with the different parts of the plastic material. For this reason, TGA is typically ran in conjunction with other material identification tests, such as DSC or FTIR. Furthermore, it takes an experienced analyst to use the information gathered from a TGA curve for correct identification of what each weight loss represents. One of the primary uses of TGA is quantification of the individual formulation constituents of a plastic material. Plastic materials can be solely comprised of a single polymer. However, many different plastic materials also contain plasticizers, fillers, reinforcements such as glass fibers, colorant, and or other formulation constituents. Here's an example of a basic reverse engineering of a material. While the material was known to contain a filler, it was unknown the amount of filler in the material. 
decomposition of the base polymer occurred around 475 degrees C in nitrogen. Upon switching to an oxygen-rich air atmosphere, there were no further decompositions present in the material. The residue left upon completion of the experiment was 39.11% of the material weight. This showed that the material contained a nominal filler content of approximately 40%. While quantification of constituents can be used for reverse engineering of a plastic material, it is also very beneficial for comparison between parts or lots of the same material. Say a series of fiber reinforced parts are experiencing failure in the field. A failed part and reference part can both be subjected to TGA analysis and their graphs can be compared. In this case, it was observed that the TGA thermogram of the failed part was nearly identical to that of the good part. Both parts showed a single decomposition in the nitrogen and air steps. At completion of the test, both parts exhibited a residue of 23 to 24%. This gives us good indication that both parts contain a similar fiber content. Therefore, it was certain that failure was not due to an insufficient amount of fibers in the failed part. Another use of TGA is assessment of the thermal stability of polymers. Here's a graph showing multiple different polymers ran on a TGA with identical parameters. As you can see, both the onset of decomposition, the decomposition temperature, and the decomposition profile of the different materials vary greatly. The PVC material shows an onset of decomposition almost 400 degrees C earlier than peak. While this can be useful to assess thermal stability, one must also keep in mind that degradation will occur significantly before decomposition in most polymers. Additionally, comparing the thermal stability of molded components from the same material can be useful in assessing compositional changes between the parts, such as molecular degradation or material contamination. In this example, molded polyacetal parts were exhibiting decreased mechanical performance in the field. DSC testing was performed, and there were very little differences observed in the melting behaviors of the failed part, new part, and the resin. However, when subjected to TGA testing, there were significant changes in thermal stability between the failed and new parts and the molding resin. As you can see, there was a significant downward shift in the thermal stability of the failed and new parts compared to the resin. The onset of decomposition for the failed and new parts occurred over 30 degrees C before the resin. This confirmed that a molecular change had occurred in both the failed and new parts in the form of molecular degradation. While TGA is a very powerful technique to quantify the parts of a material, there are some limitations of the technique that should be addressed. Primarily, it should be understood that TGA curves are not fingerprint curves. When ran with different parameters, the general shape of the curves will change. This is because the events that occur in the TGA are kinetic in nature. They are highly dependent on the current temperature and the time spent at that temperature. For this reason, any parameter that changes the reaction rate will affect the general shape and temperatures at which those reactions will occur. These parameters include heating rate and maximum temperature achieved, the purge gas or atmosphere of the furnace, the sample mass, shape, form, and morphology, as well as the pan material, shape, and size. Here's an example of how drastically different parameters can change the curve. This is a polycarbonate material that is heated at 20 degrees C per minute in nitrogen up to a temperature of 650 degrees C. There is a single weight loss that has occurred and at completion of the heating ramp, there appears to be a TGA residue of 24.04%. While this material seems to contain an inorganic filler, Notice how the residue is burned up if an additional step is added that includes heating with oxygen-rich air. The remaining 24% of the sample is consumed, making it evident that what appeared to be a filler was actually char formed during decomposition of the material. Additionally, if we repeat this procedure at a slower heating rate of 1 degree C per minute, the decomposition temperature for that polymer and char are lowered by over 50 degrees C. If a significantly faster heating rate of 100 degrees C per minute is used, then the opposite occurs. The decomposition temperatures appear to occur at higher temperatures, and the material is not fully consumed during the heating ramp in air. Another consideration for TGA is that it is limited to quantification of the major parts of a material. 
Small amounts of formulation constituents cannot typically be quantified, such as flame retardants and antioxidants. Furthermore, if a material contains multiple parts that decompose over a similar temperature range, the weight losses can overlap, making quantification of the separate parts nearly impossible. Additionally, TGA is only a secondary means of material identification, and interpretation of the data could be highly dependent on other tests that have been ran prior to TGA, such as differential scanning calorimetry, DSC, or Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, FTIR. Finally, there are some considerations with TGA that are similar to any thermal analysis technique. First, the interpretation is highly dependent on analyst experience. This can make interpretation difficult and caution should be used to not overinterpret the data. Second, TGA analyzes the properties of a sample that is roughly the size of a pea. Therefore, the sampling region may not be representative of the entire part. And third, the machine is sensitive to material contamination, so it's important the materials are kept separate and that preparation procedures are similar for all samples. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to let us know and comment below with any questions or topics you would like to see covered on this channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe so that you do not miss any of our new content. If you have any specific problem you would like one of our experts to discuss with you, please reach out to the contact info in the description below. See you in the next video.